It's Fun Friday, and your weekend has just begun. Woohoo! Welcome to the Morning Moxie Show. I am your host, Alicia Sharp, and today is Fun Friday. And we have Michael Jr. coming to us today, talking to us about a lot of different stories and some fun stuff so that you can laugh out loud. Here's Michael Jr. So we're going to have some fun. Um, my name is Michael Jr. I'm going to do some jokes. Um, but they're not going to start right away, though. I just want to point that out. So, um, cause for me, comedy is like, it's like dating somebody that you really, really like. You know, um, and I don't want to rush this, you know. <laughs> I used to do that. I used to come up on stage. I would do a joke right away, jump right in, you know, but, but I got hurt, man. So, you know. <laughs> and let's be honest, right? I'm sure you've seen a lot of comedians in your day. You know, I know I've had my share of audiences, you know. <laughs> but it didn't last. So I just, I want this to be different, so. We're doing comedy at a church. Like, like how's this gonna work out, really? I mean, some people are like, I just came to see this thing explode. <laughs> What's so amazing about doing comedy at church, when I was a kid, laughing at church was illegal. I couldn't laugh at church. I remember one time laughing at church because this lady was jumping around and her wig fell off. So, that stuff was funny. Her wig fell off and then my grandma, I laughed. My grandmother would pinch and twist. I can understand a pinch. You gonna twist? That's the devil. Church was the worst. Oh my goodness. Church lasts like six hours. Dude on stage is mad at everybody. <laughs> I can't figure out why he's so angry. Seven years old, I figured out why he was so angry. He was angry because he had some phlegm caught in his throat. So at the end of every sentence, he tried to get it out. He'd be like, the Lord said, ah. <laughs> Act like you're, ah. I'm like, Grandma, he need to gargle, Grandma. <laughs> I'm seven years old, man. Church lasts six hours, too. And we go in the basement and eat a sandwich and come back up. I'm like, what was that, a halftime or something? Actually, I'm gonna be real with you. There's enough black people here. It was always chicken. Why do we always gotta eat chicken every single time? I know, I, I had to tell them. I'm sorry, it was, we at church, you know? And tuna. At the end of church, they would ask us, they'd always be like, so you wanna go, after this, we all gonna go to the sister church. I don't even like the brother church. <laughs> One time I get to church, seven years old, there's a dead body in the front. It's a funeral. Nobody explains that to a seven-year-old Michael Jr. I'm thinking that's how they roll. <laughs> like every three weeks or so, they bring a dead body in <laughs> as an example or something. And the dude on stage yell at everybody in the audience like they the ones that did it. <laughs> I remember asking my grandmother, I'm looking for some explanation. I'm like, Grandma, what happened to the man in the box? What happened to the man in the box? Her whole explanation was, he in a better place. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of box did he live in before? Dude on stage said he went to see the king. That was his whole explanation. He went to see the king. Ha! <laughs> I don't understand what that meant. They didn't even call the kids' choir up to sing. I was in the kids' choir, not because I wanted to be in the kids' choir. I was in the kids' choir because I was a kid. <laughs> and it was a requirement. And what song we got to sing? Soon and very soon, we are gonna see the king. I don't want to see the king. I don't want to see the king. 
You ever go to a funeral and people always talking about the person in the box like they sure he going to heaven? <laughs> and then they tell you, that they, and then the people get up there, they always talking about him. And the last thing you know, like the dude stabbed three people and he never prayed one time in his life. And all of a sudden everybody, like he going to heaven. Like, I'm sure Uncle John is looking down at me right now and he's, a little tears going down his eye. I'm like, he probably looking up at you right now. <laughs> That's a sweat bead is what it is, a sweat bead going on. I just made that up right now. I just made that up. Even as a kid, growing up, we were poor. We weren't even poor, we were po'. We couldn't afford the other letters, man. We had no money. I was actually being sponsored by a family from Haiti. <laughs> when you're poor, your creativity excels. Like it really, really excels. I remember I wanted an action figure when I was 10 years old. I wanted an action figure so bad. My birthday came along. My dad hands me a box. I open it up. It's empty. He said, it's Invisible Man. I was like, that is awesome! I played with that thing for like three weeks, man. So my brother hid it from me. Couldn't find it nowhere, man. I knew he took it. We played games, we just made up games. We played this one game called uh, Talk About You. The instructions were to just talk about you. That's all we did, we talked about each other. My friends would talk about me, but like, Michael Jr., you got some big feet. And I was good at this game. I was like, oh yeah, well you so dark skinned, I bet if you ride a motorcycle, you get a ticket for tenant windows. <laughs> It's hilarious. White people are looking for black people to make sure they can laugh. It's just okay. Though. <laughs> it's okay? You sure? No? Mm. We ain't had no money, man. We had to, my parents would buy us some stuff, but they couldn't pay for everything. Like we had the game Operation, right? We ain't had no batteries. Then my cousin came over and he figured out a way how to plug it into the wall, right? It's a whole nother game now. Man. Whole nother game, man. The Operation Roulette is what we called it. It was Operation Roulette. We just played one time. We played one time. I was like, nah, I don't want to play. I don't want to play. He's like, it ain't my turn. Somebody else better go. It ain't my turn. I ain't going. Actually, you know what? Um, I made that up. <laughs> we weren't poor when I was a kid. I just said that because some jokes are funnier. Some jokes are funnier from a poor perspective. I'm going to prove it right now. You always, here's a great example. I'm going to tell you the exact same joke from a prosperous perspective. Watch what happens. When I was a kid, my parents bought us the game Operation, um, and we played it. So. It's not as funny, is it? Yeah. It's better if I was poor, so. We're excited, me and my wife just had a new baby. Had a new baby, yeah. yeah that, well, that's how they come, it's new. My wife wanted to go to the prenatal classes, right? And I'm like, why I gotta go to class? You pregnant, I pass, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I could teach a class or something, I don't know what you want me to do, but I went to the class because I love my wife, right? And I'm afraid that they're gonna play the video. I don't wanna watch the video. I'm looking for Bible verses against the video. And then the doctor tries to throw in perks. The doctor was like, so listen, um, during birth, would you like to catch the baby? Catch the baby doing what? What are you talking about? 
He said, no, 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 no. If you want to, you can catch the baby. I'm like, isn't that your job to catch the baby? Do I get a discount if I catch the baby? What are you going to be doing while I'm catching the baby? You went to school to catch the baby. I do comedy. I shouldn't be catching the baby. That was Michael Jr. giving you some laughs today on Fun Friday. And you can find that clip on YouTube if you search under Michael Jr. Laughing on Purpose. You can also find out more information about him and what he does and where he's going to be at his website, michaeljr.com. That is all I have for you today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and that you go out and tell others about Jesus and what he's done for you. And I'd also love it if you take just a minute to rate and review this podcast on iTunes. That would be awesome. And share it with your friends if it's encouraged you. It's free, free encouragement, free laughs. Share it with your friends. Have a great day. I will see you again next time. God bless.